Hello everyone, recently I was asked by this user how I track 360 video inside of Blender and so I thought I'd make a video going over my method in order to do that. Anyways, you can see the final result in the background. Let's go ahead and start over with a new uh, Blender project. So we'll just do new general. We can go ahead and delete all this stuff and then go ahead and plus VFX and motion tracking to go to the motion tracking workspace. Now I've actually provided a free download link for the footage that I'm going to be using for this tutorial. So go ahead and download that in the description below. Anyways, let's open that up. Okay, so here is my video clip. Let's open that up. And as you can see, we have our video loaded in here. Let's set the scene frames and prefetch the footage. Also, while we're at it, we can go ahead and change the render properties color management. We can set that to standard just so we have more accurate colors here. Next, we need to go ahead and set up some settings over here. So first of all, I'm going to click normalize, set this to previous frame. And then in the correlation tab, I'm going to hit 0.9 uh, just so Blender has to be 90% sure that the tracker is accurate. Next, we can go ahead and start detecting some features. So I'm going to come and play with the pattern size and search size. Now, these are default for 1080p footage, I find. So I'm going to uh, multiply them by two. Since this is a 4K piece, we're going to go ahead and detect some features right here. And then I'm going to set my threshold down to a lower number. So I just stick to a 0.01. Just helps me out there. We have a ton of tracking markers now. Uh, all we have to do now is just uh, control T to track those forward. Okay, so now we have our first set of trackers. We can scrub throughout the footage to see everything. And this is the problem that a lot of people are having. As soon as you get kind of halfway through the footage, you will see that we have lost a ton of tracking markers. And so now what do we do? How do we get some of these tracking markers in the scene and still have a decent track? And so what I want to do is I want to uh, go to the very end of my clip. And so that's 280 for me. I went ahead and changed the frame range just for this tutorial, but you just want to go to the very end of your clip range. So 280, we're going to go ahead and detect some more features. And now instead of tracking forwards, we can actually hold control shift and then T to track backwards. And what we're doing is we're making sure that we have markers all throughout our footage. So you can see we have some decent markers all throughout our footage. Again, they are going to be in the areas where it automatically detects. You can actually see around like 250, we have a ton of markers kind of drop out of our range. And that's to do for a variety of reasons. The biggest uh, for this shot is actually motion blur. And so what I want to do is I want to go into the middle of the frame range. You can see we don't have a lot of markers up here. Uh, real quick tip, you can hold Alt D and uh, hide our inactive markers right there. So we don't have a lot of information information up here and that would uh, be some information I would like for some camera tracking and so what I want is I want to go to the range where I, I feel like there aren't any camera tracking markers so like right here we'll go to like 160 for example uh, and then we can detect some more features and again we'll track forward so that is control T so we'll track those forward uh, you can also see in the graph view down here you can maybe see some areas that might not have as many tracking markers so like right here we have a big dip in markers right there so let's bring this back down and let's go back to that same uh, frame range. So I'm going to go do 159 for me. So right there where we started our last uh, set of markers, then we can hold control shift T and we're going to track those backwards. And we're just going to repeat this process until we feel good about having tracking markers throughout our entirety of the clip. So if I kind of scrub throughout now, I'll kind of eyeball it here. Uh, we do have some markers kind of jump out here uh, and then the next set of markers pick up. And so I'm just going to, for my sanity right here, this is kind of a frame that we don't have a lot of information. We're going to do one more set. So detect some more features right there. Control T, track those four. I expect a lot of these are actually going to drop out on us just because that area is super high in motion blur. So I don't know if the trackers are actually going to track. Um, so yeah, so we'll track those backwards as well. And it looks like some stuck, uh, but some uh, around that area is fine. Uh, but we do have a ton of information down here. So hopefully it'll be able to bridge the gap. Anyways, we have enough markers right now. Let's go ahead and get a solve. And so I'm going to come here, A and B keyframe, we have to select. Uh, now you could, of course, select the uh, have blender, try to figure that out, but I like kind of setting my automatic range. And so for my clip, we do have a lot of depth at the end of this clip, which I really like. So I'm going to go maybe from 250 to like 275, we'll try that. Uh, for this shot, I found that it's not really that difficult to select these. Again, the A and B keyframe is just the range where we're gonna have the most amount of depth information. Then we're gonna refine everything. I didn't take any measurements uh, there, so we'll just solve the camera motion and should get our first solve error. Okay, so we have our first solve error, this 5.93 number. We need to get that down as low as possible. You can see our graph down here, this little blue line is jumping all over the place. And so we have to get that to be a steady uh, line, hopefully around the one pixel range. Uh, this is for 4K footage. And so one pixel around that range is totally fine for 4K. 
uh, let's go ahead and get this lower. So I'm going to go to clean up. We're going to clean up the tracks. Let's uh, push this reprojection error up. The idea here is I just want to select the highest error tracks. And so for me, that's going to be like the top 10% of tracks. Let's go ahead and hit X and delete the tracks over here. And let's click resolve our camera motion. Okay, so that got our solver down. You can see over here, I'm going to do a cleanup tracks a couple more times. So let's clean this up. Now, uh, specifically for 360 shots, you want to make sure that you're not deleting uh, so many key markers in particular areas of the frame. And so uh, every now and again, it might be useful to kind of scrub throughout your clip. Uh, for instance, like right here, we are losing some uh, bad markers. I'm not too worried about us losing some markers in this area, just because you can see if I zoom in here, this is a whole mess uh, just because of the motion blur and everything in the background and so we're not going to have any good information there to begin with so i know uh, i'm safe with having that out uh, we are at around a one uh, pixel solver. We can maybe get that a little bit lower. I'm going to Alt D to reveal all of my markers again, just so I can see everything from a uh, kind of bird's eye view. Let's uh, clean tracks and push this up again. Not too much, but not too little. Again, like 10%. Let's solve the camera motion again. I want to try to get this. Uh, let's try for a 0.8. Again, you don't want to push it too much. You want to have at least eight tra uh, tracker markers throughout the remainder of the clip. But I find the more the merrier. So 0.84, we'll do it one more time. Again, for 4K footage, 0.8 of a pixel off is really, really good. And so we'll do it again. Solve camera motion. And there you go. We have a 0.74. Let's do a final check. Just scrub throughout our thing. And that is looking good, especially towards the end where our A and B keyframe is. Uh, that's really good that we're seeing all these markers here. The final check that we have to make sure is our blue line down here is perfectly straight, which it is. It looks pretty good. And so that means that we have a nice camera solve. We can go ahead and set up our tracking scene now since we don't have any information up here. I'm going to go down, set background and tracking scene right there. Uh, then I like to go ahead and delete some things already. I like to delete the foreground and background collection as well as the cube and the light. We just don't need any of that stuff yet. Uh, we're going to add in our own CG. Next, we can come over here. I like to turn the uh, motion tracking tab off just so we can see a little bit more clearly down here. And we'll come to frame one. You can see this is the result that we're getting. Now to actually align the scene, what I've been doing recently uh, that has helped me out is if we click on the ground, we'll go into edit mode and I like to right click and subdivide. We'll just push that all the way up to 10 just so we have a ton of subdivisions. Now, if we come out of here and go into wireframe view, you can see that we have a nice grid that we can see much more clearly than the actual grid of the ground. It just helps us kind of understand where the ground rotation is into our scene. Okay, so now let's go ahead and set up the floor down here. If I hold Alt D again, I can hide everything. And I know I want my CGI to be around this area is kind of where our focal point of the entire shot is. So that is where I want to put my CGI. Now you can go around on different kind of layers and see and select many different points. But I just want to select three points that are on our ground. Uh, this is a nice flat ground, so we shouldn't have any problems there. Just selecting some uh, three random points there. Let's click floor. Now we have our floor set up and that is looking pretty accurate. Uh, the final thing we can do is I'm going to go ahead and define the uh, origin point. So that is my origin right there. We'll set that and already it's rotated pretty nicely. But if you do need to rotate it on the X and Y axis, you can actually define that as well. So we'll click this one and hit X axis as well. And so now you can see we have some nice rotation set up into our scene. The final thing and most important thing for camera tracking is setting up the correct uh, scale inside of our scene. So I'll select with two random points right here. And these two points are about two feet apart from each other. And so we can hit the set scale button right there. We'll set this to 0.6 because uh, this number is in meters. So 0.6 meters is about two feet right there. And there you go. Now we have the scale uh, somewhat set up correctly. If you actually shot this footage yourself, you can do your own me measurements on the day. Uh, but unfortunately, I did not uh, do that. And so we're just doing a little bit of guesstimation there. Uh, so yeah, so now we have our uh, camera tracking set up. We can come out of here to layout view and just kind of test some things on our floor. Uh, let's delete that. And I like to test uh, my camera tracking by adding a mesh cube. We can uh, go to edit mode, G, Z, and then control snap that up. Uh, the only reason I'm doing that is so that we can have our origin point on the very bottom of our cube. So that if I hit S to scale, we can scale it on the ground plane like that. So now let's go and add a couple of array modifiers. So just two array modifiers. I like to set these to like five by five to have a five by five grid. And we can space out the X and then also the Y. And so I can set those to any number I want. Uh, this isn't really 
too much of a uh, you know thing that I have to decide for me because really I just need it spaced out enough so I can see all of the tracking and so as you can see we're going around the scene and if I kind of zoom in, uh, we do have a ton of lens distortion, which it's calculating. But as you can see, everything is sticking pretty well. Okay, so that is how I do 360 camera tracking inside of Blender. Thank you so much again for the comment. And if you guys have any other ideas, throw them down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear them. Anyways, make sure to check out our Patreon and Discord. You can check that out in the link in the description. But thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.